Okay, hello everybody. My name is Jürgen Fuhrmann. I will talk about finite volume methods for nonlinear multiphysics problems uh, and an implementation of this type of method uh, in the package Warner FEM.gl. We speak about systems of n coupled partial differential equations, um, which um, 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 are valid in the d dimensional domain uh, and some time interval. And uh, these partial differential equations are essentially described by two main terms. Uh, so one term is, uh, it's, so they have a basic variable, it's the function u, which could be a species concentration, which could be also a potential, or which could be um, some, um, um, some, some pressure. We have a species concentration, s, depending on this basic variable. In many cases, this dependency may be um, trivial. Then we have a flux, which is driven by uh, the gradient uh, of this basic variable, and which also can depend on uh, the, the um, uh, just in a different way, also on, on um, uh, the, the basic variables. And we have an erection term which describes how these species can interact and uh, create and can be created and destroyed. Yeah? So these are three functions S, R, and G, which essentially um, um, can def uh, describe this problem. In the one dimensional case, um, for instance, uh, with uh, just the simple diffusion problem, we have a fixed law uh, um, describing the proportionality of the gradient of the concentration to the flux. And uh, the function s in this case is just the uh, um, identity. If we had have an additional convection term, then we just um, add this to the flux term. Unsaturated porous media flow is a little bit more complicated. In this case, indeed, we have uh, U as the um, um, capillary pressure and in the saturation depending on this capillary pressure and the permeability depending on the saturation. And once again, a driving force uh, consisting in the gradient of this capillary pressure and an additional force during, due to um, gravitation. And uh, and just a completely different topic is um, our electrolytes. The charge equilibrium of electrolytes can be described by an electrostatic potential. Uh, and the gradient times epsilon describes an electric field. And then at the right hand side, we have the sin hyperbolic sinus um, um, of uh, our basic variable, the electrostatic potential. So for and larger than one, we can describe in this context multiphase flow and porous media, reaction diffusion systems, or charge transport in electrolytes, semiconductors. Um, the later topic is uh, just the current main topic I'm working on, and uh, for which I also created this package. So if you take um, this type of equations, we can um, uh, look at them just in an a representative elementary volume and apply the Gauss law and uh, just the newton leibniz rule in order to make some kind of um, species balance uh, in this representative, representative elementary volume out of this. And this describes now the change of amount of species between two moments of time is proportional uh, to what is flowing in or out and to what is um, created or destroyed during the reaction. And this type of um, 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 view on the problem also um, is very closely li linked to basic physical principles which are used in order to derive um, this type of, of uh, systems of equations. And one possible idea to discretize such a dis system then is to just um, subdivide our domain into just lots of artificial representative elementary volumes, just assign a value of um, our basic variable to uh, certain collocation points associated to each of these representative elementary volumes and essentially watch their evolution due to this um, integral balance. And uh, this can be then boiled down to um, a system of nonlinear equations um, on the neighborhood graph of this um, subdivision into representative elementary volumes. Um, so the change of amount of species um, during uh, a time um, interval is proportional to the sum of the fluxes uh, between uh, neighboring control um, to to, um, to neighboring um, representative elementary volumes and to um, the amount of species um, created or destroyed due to the reaction. So, and then uh, an, an important point is here that in uh, this integral, 
uh, formulation, uh, we always have to talk about the normal flux um, inside or outside the representative inventory volume and the subdivision needs to be uh, formulated in such a way that the interfaces between two control volumes is, is orthogonal um, to this um, 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 two collocation points uh, associated to these neighboring control volumes. How can we create such a subdivision? So um, one possibility is to just uh, use uh, um, the Lunet triangulation of the domain omega and partial, uh, particular boundary conforming the Lunet triangulation which also takes into account the boundary of the domain uh, which can be created by triangle uh, by the triangle mesh generator by Jonathan Shuchak uh, which is used in the triangulator GL package. Uh, Tedgen by Hang Si is also um, able to create this um, kind of discretizations in three space dimensions and uh, there's work in progress to also make this available via um, tedgen.gl um, for this code. And there's an interface uh, in extendable grids.gl which um, essentially tries to join all these three things uh, just behind the common IPI to create meshes. Once we have the Denonet um, triangulation we can create its dual Duvoronai tessellation. This also gives the name to the package. And the so-called Voronoi cells can be created by just joining the circumcenters um, of triangles adjacent to a discretization node. Uh, and these Voronoi cells then are taken as the representative elementary volumes in our um, discrete formulation. And the nice thing about um, this is that uh, just this duality construction um, guarantees us also the orthogonality between uh, the, the interface between two um, Warner cells and uh, the line between two collocation points. And the neighborhood graph um, is um, just equivalent to the um, edges of the triangulation. And another practical aspect is that we can calculate everything simplex wise. There's no need for the explicit construction of this Warner tessellation. Yeah, but formally we, we use this in, in order to, to formulate the, the um, method. And then essentially we just you can derive an application programming interface uh, from this idea. Um, we just can um, uh, just have a grid which we can create and we just write functions in Julia which describe the storage term, the reaction term and the flux term. We combine them together to a physics object. Uh, we create a system out of this, um, uh, create solution vectors and uh, calculate the evolution. Um, the solution method is based in this case on implicit order time discretization for stability reasons. Um, I'm also envisioning to be more general here. Um, for each time dependent uh, time step problem and also in the stationary case we used Newton's method with analytical Jacobians uh, and some damping and parameter embedding strategies um, in order to solve the nonlinear systems and we obtain the Jacobian matrix by using forward diff.gl on the um, functions S, R and G and using the extendable sparse.gl um, package in order to assemble um, the uh, Jacobi matrix as a sparse matrix and this package, uh, that package is able to just uh, um, add entries to a sparse matrix in an efficient way by specifying just the uh, entries in uh, corresponding to indices I and G and behind uh, sits a linked list data structure um, which um, uh, makes this uh, process um, rather efficient and then we use direct and iterative solvers for uh, solving the linear systems of equation. Um, the one, some theoretical advantages of the method, so uh, just, just the way we formulate this method and we derive it um, um, essentially exhibit um, local mass conservation, which is an um, important physical property of the systems. Then uh, for convection diffusion problems, there are robust concepts of upwinding, uh, which allow to avoid um, in, in a guaranteed way on physical oscillations. Um, we can guarantee uh, um, positive concentrations uh, in cases where this is important. We can also prove in many cases the consistency to thermodynamic principles. Uh, so we can have a discrete second law of thermodynamics. And there's also convergence theory for nonlinear systems uh, based on compactness methods. Just to show you an example, um, I prepared uh, some, some um, notebook here. 
So we used a couple of packages in order to, to, to run this example. And uh, the example here is uh, the so-called so Brusselette equation, which is a system of uh, uh, two species which are coupled by some reaction term. Uh, so here it's uh, described uh, as a system of equations. So we set some parameters. We calculate, uh, define a generic storage term. In this case, it's a trivial one because we just have u, uh, one u2 under the time derivative. We set um, a diffusion function and uh, describe the reaction in the reaction function. We create a two-dimensional grid. Ah, so just made an error here. It's not plot by d, plot 2d, but plot of grid 2d. Sorry for this one. And uh, uh, create our grid. Then uh, we put this together into this physics object. We create the finite volume system out of this and enable some species, uh, one and two, just uh, in the interior domain of this uh, problem. Then we need to create a um, solution vector and an initial value. Uh, we take some slightly random initial value and then we can run the evolution and plot. So there's also a method which um, uh, essentially um, is able to, to simulate or to solve the whole time evolution. But in this case, I just use an open loop in order to catch um, the plots for creating uh, the drift of the result, which we hopefully will see soon. Uh, in this case, I'm using for plotting um, the um, uh, reshaping of the solution vector on uh, just a rectangular grid. Um, the question of using uh, tree contour f and, and, and these things uh, in plots is still an open problem. So now we see the animation and uh, we start from the nice, from some kind of random initial value and see this nice effect um, of the Brusselletta equation that we get some kind of um, structure um, evolution, uh, st uh, structured um, um, distribution of species during um, this, this um, um, uh, evolution, so some, some kind of, of um, um, structure creation. Yeah? So this is um, what we can do. Um, this is just one example and uh, just the, the nice thing is that we essentially, uh, to describe the physics of the problem, we just um, can really um, don't have to write much code, we just have to write functions um, describing um, in storage term, the diffusion term and the flux term, and we don't have to specify the, the derivatives. Uh, these are essentially calculated um, using the forwarded packages, uh, Julia package. So further features, uh, species sets and uh, also the physics uh, can vary between subdomains uh, of omega, so we can really rather describe rather complex problems. We can also have species sitting at interfaces between um, um, two domains and have interface reactions. Uh, in this case, then we can um, 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 handle the solution vectors as essentially as sparse matrices. Uh, and then nevertheless, using the abstract, abstract area interface, we can um, 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 just access them in a very similar way um, compared to dense solution vectors, which we have seen here. And there's also um, just a submodel which does an impedance spectroscopy simulation. That means small signal analysis um, for, for um, nonlinear problems with some kind of uh, um, periodic um, uh, forcing. So uh, the near future, I want to work on um, 3D, on the 3D case, which is essentially taking over experiences which we gained in, in C++ uh, to, to the Julia code. And also um, we need more transparent use of iterative solvers and preconditioners. Uh, then it would be interesting to have a uh, um, um, convenient geometry description API in for the ex extendable grids package which also will be based on ideas which we already implemented in C++. Multi-threading uh, is not done yet for the assembly. And then it would be interested, uh, interesting to be compatible with differential equations.gl. This would open us uh, the, to us the possibility to use very different um, time discretization strategies. And another interesting package, is package which could be compa uh, compatible with this one is bifurcation kit. 
uh, which also would help us um, with uh, some important, uh, some interesting um, application cases. So the real magic of Julia, which helps uh, very much in this case, is the the possibility to have this um, automatic forward mode um, differentiation. Um, and this was also uh, this the availability of availability of this also triggered me to to to, to start with Julia at all. Multi-build dispatch, of course, helps a lot. Then it's very easy to write closures. Um, just in, in, for instance, in this case, for specifying this this. Um, um, uh, physics functions and also the abstract area interface is something which helps very much to um, just um, hide different imp implementations uh, of kind of the same thing we, we, um, um, as solution errors in our case um, behind one interface. So uh, what is still a little bit open where I'm also try to, uh, trying to, to, to contribute something is um, graphics. So PyPlot is slow by design for the time-dependent problems. In plots.gl, we, we do miss the tree contour and tree plot functions, which we um, would have in PyPlot. And I started to work on uh, VTK-based visualization. There's a package vtkview.gl, which so far works for Linux and x11. Uh, just for Mac OS and Windows, um, um, we might find a try out a Qt-based version. And the other problem here is also it's hard to integrate into notebooks. Maybe this is possible. And what would be also interesting um, um, would be a consolidation of application programming interfaces for meshes. Uh, we have some special needs in this case. We need subdomain markers, boundary markers, uh, need uh, just, uh, just um, separate boundary grids and interior interface grids. Uh, we also want to be able work to work on varying element geometries and graphics. So I'm working on the extendable goods.gl package. Um, maybe we can find also some kind of, of common ground in this, uh, um, uh, on, on, on referring to these things, um, for instance, with the packages of, of Patrick Russell. So this was all. Thank you very much.